Good Friday morning, everybody. It is October 16th, and uh, we are work, continuing to work our way through Luke. We are in the, uh, the eighth chapter, of course, as we have been. And we're going to look at verses 22 to 25 today. Um, so far, we've been working our way through here, um, and we've been talking about the, the, the sower. and the, Well, first we had the women uh, helping Jesus and supporting Jesus with the story of the sower, the story of the lamp under the jar. Uh, and yesterday we talked about the true kindred of Jesus. And it's all about this hearing and doing, isn't it? And so thus far, you know, much of it other than the, the women following him, um, and, and him using the illustration of his family, it's been kind of a parable. It's been it's been it's been thought and 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 theory, and not uh, so much in practice. He's even using the illustration of the family as a as as in the, teaching in theory. Um, and so many times, you know, it's easy in theory. Um, it's when you get the rubber meets the road, as they say, that things become tough. And so today we are talking about Jesus calming a storm. And this is where the rubber meets the road. And I see I didn't turn my sounds off on my phone, so we'll just let a few dings come in here. I'm a little dingy today, as they say. Um, so here we're on the Sea of Galilee. Jesus and the disciples are on a boat on the Sea of Galilee. And of course, as I've mentioned before, when Gail and I were in Israel, we got to go out on the Sea of Galilee. And one of the things about the Sea of Galilee is the storms, because of the geography, it's kind of in a big bowl. It's kind of at the bottom of a bowl, and and the the the, the, the weather systems can come swooping in quite quickly, and and squalls can and can can brew up quickly on that on that lake because it's a lake. They call it the Sea of Galilee, but it's a lake, and it actually isn't even a you know. As lakes go for us over here, um, what we've, we've seen with lakes, um, you know, the Great Lakes and some of those things. Um, but I can remember in 1982 being up in Canada and walking up onto the shores of Lake Manitoba. The Sea of Galilee is nothing like Lake Manitoba. Uh, it's not anywhere nearly as large. Um, you can see the other side. Of, of the uh, Sea of Galilee when you walk up to it. Lake Manitoba, you can't see. It's like walking up to the ocean, the, uh, the, the Atlantic Ocean or Pacific Ocean. Um, so it's, it is it is a large body of water, but it's, you know, it's not as large as we sometimes think of it as being. But at, at any rate, storms do come up on it quickly, though, because of the where it lays and because it's hundreds of feet below sea level. Like I said, it's a, basically it's a bottom of a bowl where it sits. It's really strange for us. It's very peculiar in the, in in that regard, uh, the way that the, the land lays over there. And because of that, you have these storms. So when we were out on the on the Sea of Galilee, it was raining, and so we got a little better imagery of this storm. We talked a lot about this, you know, this passage about the calming of the storm and being out during the the very stormy weather, or Jesus walking on the water. Um, actually, with the, the, we were more specifically talking about Jesus walking up on the water while they were out on the storm. But at any rate, you could you could get that imagery pretty well. It was very moving to, and, and touching to be out on the Sea of Galilee when there was a it wasn't for storming, but it was raining and cloudy and dreary and, and really helped set the stage to give meaning to that experience. Um, but anyway, let's talk about verses 22 to 25, the eighth chapter of Luke, and see what we can come out of it today. One day he got into a boat with his disciples and he said to them, let us go across to the other side of the lake. So they put out and while they were sailing, he fell asleep. A windstorm swept down on the lake and the boat was filled with water, and they were in danger. They went to him and woke him up, shouting, Master, Master, we are perishing. And he woke up and rebuked the wind and raging waves. They ceased, and there was a calm. He said to them, Where is your faith? They were afraid and amazed and said to one another, Who then is this? And he commands that he commands even the winds and the water, and they obey him. Um, The disciples have been going along. They've been hearing all this teaching about, you know, listening and hearing and 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 believing and doing. Um, and here we're talking about uh, the faith that, that we that we can have. Sometimes we can even be out doing the work of God, and our, you know, but do we really have the faith, or are we just doing? And we're supposed to do, but are, are we really believing? Are we real? Is it really there? burned into our hearts that, that we believe that no matter what, 
because here uh, the boat is, is your life okay your your you, this is our life and the sea is the world that your life is sailing across that you're moving through and as we move through this world with that boat that is our life um if we've invited jesus to, to be in the boat um we know in life no matter who you are no matter how how devout you are know how how strong your faith is and how how blessed you are you're going to have trials and, and tribulations you're going to have problems there's going to be illness there's going to be loss there's going to be all of these myriad of things that come with being a human being we all suffer them we all suffer decline if nothing else from surely from aging i mean aging is relentless it is it's, it's progressive and, and, and it's it's terminal i mean that's let's be honest about it as much as we don't want to say that that alone in its of itself is a trial that we have to deal with in this lifetime that we have. Um, so that boat that is our life, and and we're sailing across this this raging sea that is the world, um, and all of these things that try to come at us. We talked about the sower and all of the weeds and the crows and whatnot. It's the same kind of a thing. Um, but if we truly have Christ sitting in the boat with us. When we are so afraid and we are think that, that surely the world's going to, going to prevail against us this time, uh, we need to have that faith. And if, and even if you know, we, we, even though we can have doubts, we, we, we shouldn't criticize ourselves harshly because you know the, the disciples have doubts, don't they? They, they, they? they too cry out to Jesus. And just like they, when we have those moments where we're afraid that the world's going to prevail against us, let's remember to cry out to Christ and say, Lord, save us. Master, Master, we are perishing. Um, there's nothing wrong with doing that. There's no shame in that. Um, but it's that faith, that belief, that when we cry out to him, that he will indeed save us. Nothing this world can bring against us is going to prevail against us, folks. There's just absolutely nothing in this world that we as Christians should fear, uh, because what can it do to us? It can harm this physical body. It can, it can deteriorate this body. But you know what? This body wasn't meant to stay here forever. We are merely here on a, on a passing journey. Um, through this, we're, we're trying to get to the other side of the lake, if you want to look at it that way on that other shore is 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 our heavenly reward and we are just trying to cross that and god's with us on that journey what a blessing that is what an amazing thing that is when we really think about it and we focus on it and we believe it and we have faith that he'll get us through no matter what the winds can rage all they want to but they will not prevail against christ so with that, have a wonderful day. Have a blessed day. The beginning of the weekend, uh, it, the sun is shining out there. It's a little crisp, but hey, it's fall. What a wonderful day. Take care, and remember, be a blessing to someone today. See you tomorrow morning. Bye-bye.